Well, good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to the Needy Homesteader channel and a really fun video for you guys today. Five things that I love to can and the five things that I wouldn't can again necessarily. We'll talk about it when I get to that. But this is a collab that has gone around YouTube for um, quite a few years now. It's been done a couple of times. I always love when it comes around because it's very interesting to see what people like to can maybe one year and maybe in a year or two, maybe their favorites have changed. I know mine changes. I was just talking to my girlfriend Angie from uh, Angie's Pantry about this. Like it all depends on the season, you know, and what you're kind of into cooking because your cooking evolves as you, as you grow so uh, always a fun collab this one is being put on by Leanne and I don't want to mess anything up because brain damage is real <laughs> over at the Mennonite farmhouse it's called what I love and not can again so um, this is a collaboration but I believe it's an open collaboration so if you guys want to do a video reply you can definitely do that I think she'll add you to the playlist and then that way um, we can all kind of join in and see what uh, what one another loves to can and what we don't know what we maybe don't really specifically like or the results or uh, we'll talk about it <laughs> okay so of course I'm gonna start with the things that I love to can and um it's really hard to kind of trim it down because there's so many things that i love to can and it all depends really on the season but i'm gonna show you i, I think i have six sorry leanne <laughs> i have six things that i will never ever go without like they always have to be on my pantry shelf um because i use them on a daily almost daily basis so oh, let's get into it Okay, a staple in my kitchen that I use almost every night for dinner, stock. <laughs> and I don't care what kind of stock it is. This one happens to be onion stock. This one happens to be a smoked ham stock. I have beef stock, chicken stock, vegetable stock. Onion stock tends to be my favorite though because it's the most universal. Um, but I use stock in everything. So um, from my chilies to my sauces to my, I, I even use it in my rice when I, um, when I pressure cook my rice. I cannot go without stock, you guys. I use it, like I said, almost every night in, um, in cooking and I absolutely love it it's so easy to can um, and it is a staple in my house another thing that I cannot go without in my house are beans and you know when I first started uh, building a pantry uh, and rice and beans were one of the the staples that I added to my pantry my family didn't eat a whole lot of rice or beans they really didn't eat beans other than when I made chili, that was pretty much the only time I made beans. So I made it a point many years back to start incorporating rice and beans into our diet so that in case there was an emergency, it wouldn't be a shock to any of anybody in my family system when we started eating rice and beans. So beans are great. They're great filler. I use them in taco meat. You know, instead of using two pounds of taco meat to feed five, six uh, people, I use one pound of taco meat and then I'll throw in um, a jar of black beans or pinto beans with it. And it really stretches the meat. I throw beans in rice. Um, I throw beans in just about anything. And I also love to make them in as a side dish, throw some barbecue sauce and some brown sugar and some um, seasonings in there. And you've got like a, a side of barbecue baked beans. Really, really good. So this one happens to be my um, my chili beans, which I love. Uh, this is a staple. And um, I have another jar here of black beans, but I do pinto, I do northern, um, I do a red kidney when I can find it. So beans, a staple. Now I'm a mom of many, so a staple in this house has to be jam and jelly. I happen to have some apple cider jelly, which is my kids' favorite that I make. I make this from um, scratch, and then I have a caramel apple jam. So jam and jelly is big here, you know, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, um, jam and, uh, and cream cheese and bagels in the morning. We go through a lot of jam and jelly here with all the kids, and so I always have to have this on my shelf. 
Another staple, it's got to be vegetables. One of my favorite things to can is green beans, but I love to can corn, pumpkin, uh, butternut squash, you name it, I like to can it. But green beans happens to be one of my favorite, even though they're a little bit more uh, labor intensive as far as cleaning them and snapping them and all of that. I like to can mine with black uh, peppercorns. It gives it a nice little, mm, like a little hint, a little kick to it. Um, but green beans are one of my favorite things to can, but I love canning canning vegetables, especially out of the garden. That includes tomatoes. Um, you can't go wrong, especially if you grow it yourself. That leads me into, of course, canning fruit. I love canning fruit, especially when you get like pineapples on sale for, you know, a dollar a piece. Bring them home, cut them up, can them. Um, I like to can my uh, pineapples in uh, organic apple juice because my kids then like to drink the juice. But I love uh, doing, these are blueberries, uh, wild blueberries in a simple syrup. Um, you can't go wrong with always having fruit on your uh, pantry shelf. And that leads to my bonus number six favorite thing to can because I couldn't leave it out. And it's kind of um, in my little inner circle of uh, canning friends. For, uh, for the longest time, I was the only one who uh, actually canned this. And it's pie filling. You guys, I love canning pie filling. Now I know it can be a little it, it, a little challenging. But once you get it, and the more you do it, the more you get used to it, um, you know, because I know, you know, when you can it, it can explode. You have to get the, the head space right. I've made a video on all this, but pie filling is one of my favorite things to can because you can mix it with a fruit and you can make it a simple dump cake, like a, a dessert like this when somebody comes over to your house. So pie filling is one of my favorite things to uh, can. This one happens to be a vanilla blueberry uh, with uh, my homemade bourbon vanilla, um, but you can never go wrong with a good pie filling. Okay, so that leads me to the things that I don't particularly like to can or things that I wouldn't can again. So I only have, uh, I have a couple things that I wouldn't can again. One being bacon. So uh, just, you know, I did not like the results of the bacon. Um, it comes out, I don't know. I, you know, here's the thing. My pantry is love in jars. I, um, I, when I can something, I, there not only is there a lot of time invested and a lot of money invested, but there's a lot of love that goes into each one of these jars. That's why they call it love in jars. Just don't like things that look like an experiment gone wrong. I just, I don't can anything labeled ugly. I don't because that your heart space, your heart space, and, and I'm learning this, um, is so important. So the intention that you put behind everything you do is so important in all that you do due to the glory of God. And so, um, so anything that just doesn't look right, <laughs> I don't like it on my shelf. That being said, I don't like that the bacon is lifted up out of the fat cap and it discolors and I just don't like that and I won't eat that. I won't serve that to my family. Um, I have tried taking the, the part that goes be, you know, below the, the fat cap and browning it. It just turns to mush. I mean, I guess the only thing that you could probably use this for to my liking would be, um, like a baked potato topping, you know, when you sprinkle it with a little bit of bacon. But I just, I don't like the results. I don't like the way it looks. I don't, I, I really have no purpose for this. So bacon is one of those things I will never can again. I still have some on my shelf. <laughs> it just kind of sits there and uh, taunts me. Um, but bacon, not my favorite. Um, another thing that I canned that was not my favorite was the black eyed peas with the ham hocks. And that's because the black eyed peas just don't hold up. They kind of turn mushy and um, not my favorite thing. Won't be canning that again. Another thing I didn't really like canning was beef stew meat. I think you have to be careful with beef stew meat. I think the key to beef stew meat is to cube it big and to sear it and um, so that it keeps its shape much like um, my chicken does. 
So I like meat that looks like that. I don't like meat that looks like this. So as you can see here, it's kind of disintegrated. It's mush. Uh, I keep it because it's food in jars and um, you know, you can mix this with rice. Not my favorite thing to can, but I think I'm gonna try to can it differently the next time I do it and cube the meat bigger and sear it, give it a nice sear. That leads me to chicken. Now I love having home canned chicken. I do not like raw packed meat. Bring you back to this, okay? There's a difference. And I don't like the way raw packed meat looks. I don't like the way it smells. I don't like the texture of it. I don't like, I don't like, I don't like anything about it. So I prefer to do um, like my chicken, cube it up, sear it, a parboil it, whatever you want to do. I prefer to parboil it. I've done it a couple of ways. Um, and then I like to can it in chicken stock. So this is how I love to can my chicken, but I do not like canning raw pack chicken. Um, it's just, it's just not for me. Um, that leads me to ground beef. I never raw pack ground beef. I know a lot of people do or they semi cook it. I cook my ground beef just as if I was cooking dinner and then I like to pack it in a jar. I like to put beef stock or onion stock with it. Um, this one actually has onions added to it. Um, and that's the way that I like to pack my ground beef. So I don't like raw packed meat. I will never raw pack meat. I just don't like the results. You know, we eat with our, with our eyes first. So we look at it and then when we open it, we smell it and then we feel it, right? So it's a texture thing. Long before it even gets into our mouth to taste it, we're looking at it, we're smelling it, and we're feeling it. So um, if it doesn't look good or smell good or have a good consistency, right off the bat, you're not gonna wanna eat it. So those are the things that I just don't enjoy um, canning. Um, I should have grabbed a, um, a jar of potatoes Potatoes aren't my favorite thing to can. I like to have them on my pantry shelf, but they're not my favorite. Um, they can get very starchy. They can get very cloudy. Um, you kind of just, you know, it, they're finicky. And it all depends on the potato. So um, potatoes are one of those things I have in my pantry, but they're not one of my favorite things to can. So that's it. That, those are my staples. My staples of must-haves, the things that I love, the things that I don't really love. Although, you know, I mean, other than, you know, the, the, uh, oh, one more thing. And I don't have any on my, on my shelf that I want to um, say I, I would never can again is the 15 bean uh, soup blend. And that's because you have to can it like beans, but you have lentils in there. So um, they basically disintegrate and turn to mush. So the end results are very much like the kind of like the black eyed peas. They're just, they're mushy and they're not a consistency that I like. So the 15 bean blend soup mix, I canned it did not like the end results at all, would never can it again. Um, I stick strictly to beans, like, you know, like your your kidney beans, your black beans, your um, nor great northern beans, those things. So um, I think that's it. I hope this was fun for you. I hope uh, this inspired you to maybe give a few of these things a try and put it up in your pantry, especially right now, uh, the way the economy is going. I know a lot of people are um, thinking about their pantry, stocking up on their pantry, getting a lot of canning done. Just remember your heart space is really important, you guys. So do it out of love. Don't do it out of fear because the energy uh, that you put into your pantry is what you're going to feel when you walk in there. So make good decisions. Spend money on things that you and your family actually enjoy eating. Um, I can do a whole video on that if you want me to of uh, things that I've learned along the way as I've built my pantry. Um, watching other people and, and, and kind of building on things that we didn't necessarily eat or enjoy. Um, so, you know, just put by what you guys enjoy eating and do it out of love and um 
and you can't go wrong. So God bless you and your pantries and your canning. And uh, let me know down below if you don't make videos, some things that you love to can, some things that you don't really like to can or wouldn't can again, uh, just so I can kind of go through them and see what interests you guys. And Leanne, thank you so much for inviting me to do this uh, this collab with you guys um means a lot i haven't done a whole lot of videos as you see i'm sitting down right now just because i can't stand uh, probably longer than five minutes so um it, it got me back up and in front of the camera so i appreciate you very much for inviting me so thank you go over to leanne's channel if you haven't subscribed uh her her content over there is fantastic this video will be in a playlist and if you want to make a video reply um make sure you tag her in it and she will add you to the playlist okay all right guys i will be seeing you soon and uh you guys take care have a great weekend bye guys